Hello, my name is Susie Libertor and I'm the owner of Visions to Images Branding and Digital Marketing. Um, I'm at a different area today um, outside of my usual office, but I just wanted to hop on and make another video for you guys to kind of help you understand a little bit more about branding and its importance behind it. Um, I kind of want to talk about the IHOP um, uh, rebrand that they just went through when they changed it from IHOP to IHOB. So it's a International House of Burgers now instead of pancakes. Even though they changed one little letter, they have to change their brand. They have to change all of their logos, everything from their stationery to their website to their social media to everything just because they changed one little thing. And from then on, they're going to change more, I'm sure. And they're going to change their imagery and their patterns and their colors a little bit slightly. So. It doesn't matter where you are with your brand or if you decide to rebrand or stick to your brand or whatever, you always should be updating and making it better and more cohesive and modern to what it portrays and what you want people to see. And with that being said, I also want you to kind of think about a couple of things if you're going through a rebrand stage or a brand stage period, and that is that you have to be careful with the fonts that you use because a lot of times people use fonts and they're not legal. They're not copywritten to be used for logos. And sometimes people even use graphics from like stock photos, stock stuff, and it's not okay to use it on logos because they're not copywritten to you and you shouldn't be able to use them. And if they find you using them, it, they could send you a cease and desist to, for your logo or they can sue you. I mean, it just depends. There's so many different variations that can happen with that. So I want people to be aware that when you hire a real professional in branding and marketing and everything, they really look into all these things and they know what they're talking about when it comes to that. So just kind of think about all of these things as you go through whatever stage you're at in your business. Now, the other thing that people always ask me about is how do we get it? How do we get a logo that looks good that portrays our audience? And it's just a series of questions. It's just a series of brainstorming sessions and then building it from there and then building it to um, a logo. So there usually I start off with a lot of brainstorming and I fine tune that and then I send it off to clients and say, hey, what do you think about this? Now, this isn't a full blown logo at this point. This is brainstorming ideas literally probably like doodles and sketches because at this point we're just really brainstorming so then from there we go and we say okay this is really cool let's stick with this let's do this and so from there we kind of do about three to five logo variations different fonts different colors different graphics all of that fun stuff so we do different ones for those and then from there we narrow it down to about one or two now depending on if the logos are similar sometimes we can use them as sub marks and we can use them as primary logos and um, trademarks like there's just so many options you can do with these logos once you fine tune it so if you look at my website you can see um, a few examples where they have like a smaller logo and then they have a larger logo and that's just a different version it's still the same thing it still portrays the same thing and when I talk to people and they say, well, I need to reach my audience, there's a lot of question on how do you actually reach this audience. And it's being able to know who your audience is first and foremost, because if you don't know who your audience is, then it's going to be harder for you to portray them and get through to them. So what I always tell people is really fine tune your audience and let's think about what they're thinking about. What are their keywords? What are their subliminal messaging? What are the colors? What are you seeing now? I've told people this before. If you're doing like a boutique, a ladies boutique store, you want something elegant and you want something modern and fresh. You don't want something kiddish unless it's a kid store. But we're talking about a lady store and ladies are attracted to very modern serif fonts or elegant script fonts when it's legible. So you always want to keep all these things in your mind as um, you build your brand and your logo. So with all of that being said, if you have any questions or you want to reach out to me, feel free to. We do offer branding audits um, and this is basically everything that we talk about besides um, we don't do like the logo design and stuff. Branding audits are strictly to audit your brand. Say, okay, you need a rebrand. Let's talk about how we can rebrand. Let's talk about your audience. Let's just get down to business and talk. There's no designing included. So it's basically like a branding consultation per se. And it's 
a couple weeks of it and then from there if you want to decide to go ahead and get a logo then we can go ahead and do a rebrand but sometimes people find that they don't need a rebrand and they just needed some um, clarification and some rethoughts because as entrepreneurs we have the self-doubt right we, do, we don't know what we don't know and we like to talk to people and get their input so with all of that being said, feel free. I will post the link here and you can go ahead and you can let me know if you're interested in a branding audit, if you have questions about your brand or if you're interested in a rebrand. Have a good day, guys.